we have purchased probably the most important, my belief, the most famous, the most important uh, Diablo ever produced. September Strayman Testarossa. Oh, the Pepsi commercial. That's the that's the answer. Pepsi commercial. Michael Jackson. So the early Testarossas were flying mirror cars. You can see this was in 1984. I'll tell you that. And this was a Strayman Testarossa, black black car. I think this is the part with the Ferrari. Should come up. Yep, there you go. There's the Strayman flying mirror. Testarossa flying mirror. That is cool. Wow, he's a pretty good driver. Ferrari only produced one open roof Testarossa example for Johnny Agnelli. And man, I don't know. I don't know how to write this. <laughs> There's so much to write in this. This car is probably gonna be, it might be the million dollar. This car needs a paint job, okay, fine. But as far as the interior, as reassembling this car, we wanna put that car back as close as we can so, possibly so get So what it. we're gonna do is the plan is to take this interior, the old pieces, and whatever we're not using from this car, and those will go to Italy. We're gonna have them redone. Okay. And then this okay. will be a project. After we're done, we have wheels, body kit, uh, but we would, I wanna do something cool with this. I mean, I, you know what's funny? I drove a single overhead cam six liter, and that was a, that's a fun car. Yeah. So even, yeah. it was, yeah, it was yeah like something yeah. like that. That's not too crazy, but. Exactly. We're building one from California. Oh, no way. Especially, to, uh, especially putting in a five-speed transmission. Yeah, yes. that would be good. And decent exhaust. Yeah. And some, some decent brakes. Yep. Nothing too crazy. Okay. You know? But yeah, that is uh, not a bad car. So I've, I've, I've got the guys at, um, Zanasi, who does all the Ferrari work, he became a friend, and we were talking, and he loves SECs. And he's like, man, I'd love to do one of your cars. And I was like, the whole goal is original, but I was like, I might have a car for you. <laughs> so he's gonna do something crazy. So I scraped already all the metal out from the camshaft, the metal yep. transfer. The, the rest of the head is done. Amazing. New guides, and all of you know, the halves were apart, and we actually added an improvement here with an O-ring in here. On the SEC. Yeah. So that looks so good. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my God, it's a different car. Man, the wheels came out gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> the wood. Out the engine compartment I did oh for you. Man, it came out so cool. Oh, the wow. hood pad. See, all this Man, up. So nice. I cleaned that wow. engine three times. Man, it came out beautiful. A lot of wood in here. There's a lot of wood. So that that panel is actually, you know, the eight, the whole A pillow. That's wow. I have not seen that too many times. So first time I drove it, boom, then he had a fuel pressure problem okay. right away. And he filled up the fuel tank. And the fuel gauge didn't work anymore. <laughs> this is what's happening. Yeah. And now it works. So um, came out gorgeous. That's a, that's awesome. Exciting. It's so pretty. Yeah, there's no saving that. <laughs> I mean, there is, you could, but yeah. you know, a new front clip or whatever. 
So it was hit. I mean, it's 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 a good hit. Yeah, this was a. Obviously, I don't know if it was the original owner or the second yes. or third, but it was a six liter. Yep. See, okay, with a six speed manual. I think we built two. Yep. Okay. We, one went to the Middle East wow. with a white body, black. Really? That was really nice. So, do you have the door panels at your shop too? Yes, but I'd rather have those door panels. They have carbon on them. Okay, that's what you want to redo. Yeah, so the carbon on the dash, the carbon in the inside, the seats would go to that car. The steering wheel, is that is carbon on the steering wheel? The gauge cluster. Get the ball rolling, just get all the carbon stuff. To Let's you. get it out and the wheel, maybe the wheels. I can refinish the wheels. Oh yeah, oh, okay, oh cool, so okay. Can just clean Grip whatever is usable, yes. In this, into that. Into that. This was, what Hartman told us, one of two. CLK 60 with a manual transmission. We found this in a very poor state, obviously. Uh, it had been involved in a front end collision. And at the time I had been dumping money into this car just because it was always a personal. When Hartman used to drive up and down North Killian uh, <laughs> in all of the Rentec cars, this was always a dream. <laughs> so. So when this became available, I said we should we should definitely save it. It's it's a historic car. It's an important car for Rentec history. I think it was in one of the magazines too. Yeah, I think so. I said okay, we should save it. Put two cars together, and uh, I think we'll have the only six liter manual CLK in this hemisphere. Thank you very much. Right, nice. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Classic logo? Yeah. Nice. No, I, I want you to go to town on this car and I want to document mm. your level of OCD and detail. <laughs> that would be cool to get it documented because I don't really have to do that. You, know? you already take apart things anyways. I think it's really cool because it's like, hey, this is not a normal piece that's coming off. Like this is unique to only this car. Like I just want people to be blown away by the attention to detail on this car. We'll unveil it at Pebble Beach this year. So document the process between now and the end of July. Sounds like fun, man. All right. I love it. Thanks, brother. Thanks, man. Right, thank you for the call, man. All we'll right. talk Bye. later. We have purchased probably the most important, my belief, the most famous, the most important uh, Diablo ever produced. It is what we're learning. It was actually two prototypes. And as I was digging, I realized that I had seen pictures of this car on the cover of Road and Track. I remember as a kid, this article was actually done in Florida. And there you can see prototype P zero, prototype zero, and you can see all the different features. And that's the most important part of this car that we'll talk about uh, once it arrives to the US, is this is a totally unique car. This is not an SE30 in many ways. Part of my research when we started this um, was this is the 1993 Lamborghini yearbook. This is the 94 yearbook. Um, but what's important about this is this actually shows the car when it was first launched in September of 93. So there she is. And this was the first SC30 ever produced. Look at this. So you can see all of the unique features. Um, you can see the windows different, the door panel, the doorknob, the whole center console. Um, and this is, here's the car here. Here's actually at the Dubai motor show and we're slowly putting together the whole story of this car just because it was literally everywhere i made some notes we know it was obviously the brochure car the lamborghini 
uh, 30th unveiling, 30th anniversary parade, Dubai Motor Show, London Science Museum, Arai Show in the Netherlands, the Lisbon Motor Show, Essen Motor Show. Actually found another magazine it was featured in as well. It was probably featured in a ton of magazines. I'm looking for the press kit. Lamborghini used to do a nice press kit um, on all of its uh, cars. This is the SVR uh, series. And what's interesting about this car, here it talks about Stefan Rattel organization, SRO, uh, who ran, they ran the McLaren F1 program and then they ran the SVR series. And this car we found from factory records and the warranty booklet was actually supposed to be kept by the factory and then later it was delivered new to Stefan Rattel in 1997. So insane story, we believe it was a gift. We've actually reached out to him, but this is, this is just, it's treasure hunting gold. How'd you find this car? A very good friend of mine, funny, I've never met this gentleman in person. He's probably one of the most passionate SE30 historians that I've ever met. Uh, he worked for the factory in period, uh, told me about this car and he said, you know, no one's found this car. It still exists and this is where I believe it is. At that point, I, I was able to discover who the owner was. I reached out to him. I made him a million dollar offer years ago. Uh, he said no. Um, someone published photos of the car covered in boxes and dust and blankets. Uh, and it's basically a garage find that's been hidden away for 20 plus years. And uh, it was sitting in the Arctic Circle, which we spoke about, which was a lot of work to get an inspector there and to do all these things because it's, it's like 12 hours north of Stockholm. Uh, there's one hotel in town, there's no flights. Um, so insane story, we're gonna tell the whole story, um, stay tuned.